Hello, and a warm uh, welcome to our new monthly show, Athletics History Live uh, with Pierre-Jean Vazel. During the show on Super Shoes uh, last December, I was fascinated uh, by uh, Pierre-Jean's uh, knowledgeable and very pertinent uh, references uh, to events and athletes of the past. So we wanted to give uh, PJ a platform so he can tell us more of these uh, great stories and see how they connect to what is currently happening in our sport. We're therefore thrilled to have with us our co-host today, French coach, statistician, and athletics lover, Pierre-Jean Vazel. Thank you for having me, Anna. <laughs> it's great to see you again, and a big thank you for agreeing uh, to this show. Thank you. That's, that's my pleasure, and uh, I really enjoy um, the subject of today. And uh, I hope we have a uh, uh, good discussions about uh, what was going on before and the, re the relevance of what is going to happen in Beijing. Yeah, I'm sure about that. <laughs> so the theme for today's show is the Olympic Games, in particular athletes who competed at both summer and winter games. Now qualifying uh, to compete in the event, which is the pinnacle of sport, is already great, but achieving this in different sports is truly amazing. Let's start by looking at some facts and figures on summer and winter games participants. So the first edition of the summer games was in 1896 in Athens, Greece, and winter games started in 1924 in uh, Chamonix, France. Before 1924, figure skating and ice hockey were part of the summer games. So there's 29 athletes who competed in one of those sports in the Summer Games of 1920 and then competed in the Winter Games in 1924. Uh, there were 11 in 1928 and one Gillis Grafström in figure skating and one in uh, 32 and one in 36, uh, Jan Pekka of Czechoslovakia in uh, the ice hockey. So 139 athletes competed in both summer and winter games in different sport, and 60 of them come from athletics. The most uh, common combination, athletics and bobsleigh with 48 athletes, then cycling and speed skating with 21, including two in the short track. Now, athletics and uh, cross-country skiing or Nordic combined, which includes cross-country skiing and uh, ski jumping, was also popular, especially in the early years, with nine athletes. And three others competed in athletics and other sports, one in ice hockey, one in biathlon, and one in alpine skiing. And that's uh, Shirin and Jaim, and uh, we saw a, a beautiful long interview with which... Uh, Christelle Sané did uh, with her a couple months ago. Now, this number will increase in the upcoming Winter Games in Beijing because uh, German sprinter Alexandra Bohard, who ran the semis of the 100 meters in Tokyo and placed fifth with the 4x1 relay, is qualified for the German bobsleigh team for the Games. And paired with reigning Olympic uh, champion Maria Manjamanka, Burkhard placed fourth in her uh, debut World Cup race then twice a second, and she could well be on course for a medal in Beijing. Now, several other athletes from our sport who had, ne however, never qualified for Olympics or World Championships will also be traveling to Beijing. And they are Kaisha Love, a U.S. Uh, sprinter with uh, 11.47 and uh, 23.66 PBs, who was selected on the U.S. bobsleigh team. Uh, British sprinter Greg uh, Cackett, PBs of 1024, 2078, and 665 in the 60 meters indoors, will contest the four man event again after making his Olympic debut in 2018. Canada's Cynthia Apia, a shot putter, discus, and hammer thrower, was already in Pyeongchang in 18 as a reserve break woman. She has now retrained as a pilot and will make her official debut in uh, Beijing. British shot putter Adele Nicole, a finalist in the shot uh, in the uh, 213 World Youth uh, Championships with a PB and who now has a PB of 1770, was named as a reserve in the women's event. 
Another sprinter who was aiming to make the Beijing team is uh, Czech Dominik Zaleski, who equaled the national record at 100 meter last summer with 10.16 and has recorded some good results in bobsleigh, including a win in the two-man event in the Europe Cup in Lillehammer, but the Czech team has not been announced yet. On the other hand, several top names have not made the cut. 2012 uh, Olympic uh, champion in the long jump, Greg Rutherford, suffered injury in November, which delayed his bobsleigh debut and then failed to reach the qualifying standard. Former hurdler, Lolo Jones, who had earned uh, a total of five gold medals in the bobsleigh world uh, championships and World Cup events in between 213 and 221, was initially named on the US team for Beijing, but later dropped from the final roster. She had placed 11th in the two women event in Sochi 214. So Pierre Jean, what is it that makes sprinting and bobsleigh so compatible? I would add to the list Montel Douglas, who was announced on the UK list as well. And that's interesting because she participated to summer games in Beijing in 2008 and she will participate to winter games in, in the same city um, this year. So that's quite in, intriguing. Um, the, the bridge um, between sprinting and bobsleigh makes, um, is, is made easier because it's short events that requires um, power, short power and sprinting. You need to sprint uh, with the bobsleigh to to give him to give it some momentum, and the strongest sprinters, uh, the ones with the greatest acceleration, have uh, an advantage in this event. Now, many have tried, but um, a few have succeeded, and we have seen very powerful athletes like Greg Rutherford. Uh, is extremely powerful. He's a long jumper, but his stats on the on, on the gym are very impressive. And it was unfortunately not enough to 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 probably to master the technique of uh, bobsleigh. Uh, also, Jifa Suba, who was world indoor champion in 60 meters, also tried. He, he did tests for 2014 uh, Winter Games, but um, he could never negotiate it with uh, with the bobsleigh. Uh, however, his stats also were were perfect uh, on the paper to to be a great pusher. Um, we we noticed that mostly the, the sprinter that um, uh, it's also on on just a single way, like it's sprinting to bobsleigh, not the other way around. Uh, and usually, it's uh, sprinters at the end of their career that try new. Uh, new things. The exception uh, is actually uh, Alexandra Burgart, the, the German, who is actually currently a very successful sprinter, and she has a, she has never been as fast as last year, and she's trying a new event. Uh, that's uh, interesting because uh, I feel that the way she trains, Bob's leg actually helps her in sprinting. Um, while for other sprinters like Lauren Williams, who was world champion in 2005 and participated to the Winter Games in 2014, she had to, to change her training and on focus more on weight room um, and gain some kilos also because you need to be a little heavier than what is what you are supposed to do to, to be on, on as a sprinter. So that's why um the connection between an elite sprinter and elite bobsledder usually doesn't happen on the same years uh but the exception is uh, alexandra this year um lolo jones also um was uh, still trying to to be an elite hurdler while uh, participating to winter bobsled competitions but um she told back then that her problem was to be heavy enough <laughs> to yeah. be useful on the team. Uh, and she was struggling to reach 70 kilos and uh, beyond uh, 
that that was her main training actually, <laughs> because she was already very strong, very powerful. For for example, she was able to lift uh, uh, more than her body weight at uh, power cleans. She was reaching 100 kilos. That's very very strong, but she needed to be heavier, and that's counterproductive when you are hurdler low and you need to be as light as possible. Now, Pierre-Jean, on the other hand, there's very few throwers competing in, uh, uh, who competed in bobsleigh at the Olympics. Can you tell us why? I think probably it's because of uh, body dimensions. Uh, when you are a thrower, being tall and have a long arms uh, is an advantage. Uh, body weight also, because um, the heavier you are, the more um, weight you can move. Uh, this was described by, by a mechanician, uh, Zaczewski, 50 or 60 years ago. So, um, yes, they are powerful, but sometimes they are too tall and too heavy. Uh, so the compromise is probably between being a sprinter and a thrower. And that's why you can find also some decathletes who are successful uh, at bobsleigh. Yeah, exactly. So a couple of throwers I've been reading about have been uh, having to lose weight, while on the other hand, as you said, sprinters like Lolo Jones, they would have to increase their body weight to be effective in the bobsleigh. Yes, that's... Um... That's the main, uh, that there is a crossroad here between sprinting and, and, uh, and throwing. And th there have been some great sprinters and throwers in the past. Uh, I can think about, uh, for example, Jackie Joyner Kersey. She has the, she still has the Tatron world record. She was a very good thrower at shot put and she was also very fast. She would probably, been very successful if she had been interested uh, in trying uh, bobsleigh at, at the back in the days. That's right. <laughs> now, several combinations among sports are a little more unexpected: rowing and bobsleigh, fencing and bobsleigh, sailing and ice hockey, swimming and figure skating, fencing and ice hockey, rowing, ice hockey, and speed skating boxing and bobsleigh, swimming and bobsleigh, rowing and speed skating, sailing and ski jumping, handball, alpine and cross-country skiing, water polo and bobsleigh, swimming and ski jumping, canoeing, cross-country skiing. Now, yes. yes, that's fascinating because all those sports require different uh, physical and abilities and skills. But uh, maybe the common point in, is being an elite athlete. However, mm, a lot of combinations were, were made in the past. And nowadays, it's more and more difficult because uh, the sports are more and more specialized. And also, I'm not sure athletes are encouraged to explore new sports because those are very different federation with different fundings and the, the competition calendar clash so it's more and more difficult to to do those uh, doubles and uh, multi-sports uh, uh, carriers yeah definitely mm -mm. so now among those 139 athletes who competed at both summer and winter games six amazing ones also won medals at both the summer and the winter games let's take a look so the first was, and the only athlete to have won gold in both summer and winter is uh, Eddie Egan, who first uh, took uh, gold in boxing and then gold in the four-man event in bobsleigh in 1932, so uh, 12 years after his boxing gold. Jakob Tullin Tams of Norway, sailing and uh, ski jumping, and uh, his was the first uh, Olympic uh, medal in uh, the history of the, the uh, ski jump in 1924. And he moved uh, later to sailing and won silver in the eight-man uh, team. Then Christa Luding-Rotenburger, 
of the DDR and uh, Germany. She started off uh, with uh, uh, speed skating and then uh, moved uh, to uh, cycling as well. And uh, uh, Pierre-Jean will tell us more about uh, Krista later. Another amazing athlete and the only one to have won multiple medals in both the summer and winter is uh, Canada's uh, Clara Hughes. So she also uh, started off uh, with the, she actually started off with cycling, winning two bronze medals in 1996, uh, and then added more medals in speed skating. Lauren Williams of the US, we will also look at uh, her in uh, more detail. And uh, the last one who uh, doubled uh, at the, uh, uh, by winning a medal in uh, baseball at the uh, Tokyo Olympic Games is Eddie Alvarez of the US, uh, who had already medaled uh, also a silver medal in the short uh, track. So, uh, Pierre Jean, you interviewed uh, the three ladies on this exclusive uh, list. So, uh, tell us about them and let's go chronologically, starting with uh, Christa Luding Rothenburger. So what is uh, interesting with Krista Luding is that she needed the authorization of the sport ministry in East Germany to be able to try to, to do both sports. Um, she started uh, with, um, um, with uh, let me check. <laughs> Yes, yeah, she, she started with uh, with cycling. I wanted to be sure about what I'm saying. She started with cycling, and it was only after ten years of practice that she was allowed to try uh, speed skating. Um, it was made easier by the fact that she was actually training um, on summer on cycling in order to be com more competitive on on the ice. And also she believed that the ice training she was doing was helping her, uh, her cycling. So it was kind of, um, um, she was improving year after year, thanks to this periodization of training, uh, summer cycling and winter skating. And um, she explained to me that the, 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 her weak point actually is that since she was not a full-time cyclist, she could never uh, master uh, the tactical side of it. Uh, of course, she had all the physical abilities. Uh, she was powerful and she had endurance. And she was also, besides um, cycling and speed skating, she was also doing road skating and also sprinting, uh, like running sp sp sprint, uh, running sprints. Um, but um, for cycling, there is a, a psychological and tactical dimension when you need to feel your opponent, uh, to feel when your opponent is going to, to start the race and accelerate. And um, it's extremely important uh, aspect of, uh, of the race in, in, in sprint cycling. And she told me that's why she lost in Seoul against Sulemai, um, because Sulemai was a uh, more expert in, in the tactical and psychological aspect of the race. So uh, although she was uh, very successful on both events, that, that's, that's the, the shortcoming and the limitation of uh, uh, trying to, shade, to, to, to chase uh, different uh, events. Um, and um, she wrote uh, uh, um, her a thesis on her training. Um, and uh, it's very interesting to see how much uh, complementary are all those events. And um, it quite contrasts with uh, uh, the experience of another athlete, um, Chris, um, Cla Clara Hughes, the Canadian. Um, and she could never be equally successful in the same years on both events uh, because physio physiologically, she believed that it's, um, it's different. 
um, she told me that um, when, as a, as a cyclist, she, she needed a lot of endurance, while for her, skating was purely sprinting. Even though the distance is long and the duration is long, um, physiologically, physiologically, it's more, it's closer to sprinting. And she told me, for, for example, when she was on a, a ice skater, her, her pulse per minute was 50. And when she went back to, to cycling, uh, her, her heart rate was now 35. So that's a big difference. And she need, she did need to prepare specifically for each. And there were parts of her career when she would focus on speed skating and go back to, to cycling. And uh, so that was a, a few years span uh, in between uh, those cycles and very different very, very different compared to Krista Ludig, who used to, to do it every year. So that's uh, quite contrasting experiences, but both very successful, of course. But again, um, Clara was more an endurance cyclist and uh, Krista Ludig more, more a sprint cyclist. So that's probably the explanation. Right. Now, Clara Hughes has um, an amazing uh, story already she was uh, she was saying that as a very young uh, uh when she was in her teens uh, she was uh, smoking a lot drinking a lot even doing drugs and she never thought she would be an athlete until she saw compatriot uh, uh, gaetan boucher winning uh, the uh, olympic uh, games in 1988 uh, so at 16 she started doing uh, sport so and and now she's an advocate for uh, uh, mental health because she suffered uh, depression after her two bronze medals uh, in atlanta so a very very interesting lady mm -mm. yes yeah, she's very inspiring and she's been one of the first whistleblower um, trying to yeah. bring the attention on uh, psychological and mental health for athletes and it was more than a decade ago and she was uh, very um, inspiring in this aspect a uh, long time before now. It's more and more uh, embraced by media as well. And yes. uh, she was a, a pioneer in this field. Mm -mm. Now tell us, PJ, why is cycling and speed skating such a good combination? So the combination is uh, because the, the, the position of the sport is similar. You are bent and you use your size. Um, and there is no contact uh, as in, in running, for example. You don't need to, to be efficient um, biomechanically on your feet and um, uh, go from one feet to another in, in like in running. So the, you kind of glide <laughs> on skating and cycling uh, in a similar way. Um, now, um, both need a combination of uh, power speed and endurance uh, in different shares. And the example of Clara Hughes and um, Krista Ludig is, is, uh, illustrates that uh, you can be a sprinter and an endurance runner in the meantime, or sometimes it requires specific training uh, so um, having both is very rare. Um, there is an exception, but he never tries the ice skating. Is um, um, Pervis, the um, French cycler. He has the world record uh, at 200 meter fly in cycling. And I know that he has um, incredible endurance capacity. So obviously very fast, but also a huge endurance capacity with a VO2 max of 70, which is uh, quite close to marathonians. And he has a, uh, this incredible combination would have made wonders probably on ice skating if he had tried or had the talent to, I don't know. But uh, that's the kind of combination you, you need uh, to be uh, extremely successful on, on those sports. 
Now, finally, let's take a look at the only woman from track and field to have accomplished uh, this feat, Lauren Williams. Right, so Lauren has uh, a silver in the 100 meters uh, in uh, Athens 2004 and a gold medal in the relay even uh, from uh, London, even though she only ran uh, the, uh, uh, the heats and not uh, the uh, finals. She also has three gold medals, one at the 100 and two in the relays at the World Championships and a silver medal in the 100 meters. She was a world uh, junior champion and uh, also a very, very strong athlete. So uh, Pierre-Jean, she's also someone you uh, spoke to about uh, their uh, uh, achievement in winning medals in both sets of games. Yes, I spoke to Doreen and also to her coach, Stuart McMillan, who prepared her for the Winter Olympics. And he's also a, a, a track coach, very successful track coach. Um, and the transition between sprinting and bobsleck for Lauren was quite easy. It looked like easy because it was very fast. She was uh, successful very, um, very soon uh, in, her, uh, in her first trials. Like Lolo Jones, her weakest point was her body weight. She was not heavy enough, um, but um, she was very powerful. But as a sprinter, she didn't rely on her strengths, more on her step frequency and, and rate. But it was easy for her to, to gain uh, muscular strengths. Um, and soon she was able to do 170 kilo squats. And Stuart McMillan explained that it's necessary to be strong, uh, as that strong, because you need to push a bobsled that weighs about 180 kilos. So um, he developed for her a, a different technique, start technique to push the bobsled. Um, usually the, the pushers start with both feet on the same level. And for her, um, he told her to push like on the blocks with one feet in front of the other. And that worked for her, and she was able to be uh, very fast on the on the timings, on the test of, uh, with the bobsleigh. And of course, she was not one of the fastest uh, with the splits uh, in the competition in, in Sochi Winter Games. Um, what was different also is that uh, athletics is an individual sport, if you accept the relay, <laughs> but. Um, in bobsleigh, you need to, it's like a, a, a team race, really. You need to trust your, your, uh, your teammates. And uh, that was a, a quite easy aspect because uh, uh, Lauren is an easygoing person and she could adapt very well to this, uh, to this difference with uh, what she was uh, experiencing as a track sprint sprinter. And um, of course, her main care, sprinter, sprint career was behind her. And that's a, a common trademark in, in, in what we can see in athletes going to bobsleigh. They're already past their prime. I can think about Jana Pittman also, the hurdler, who was um, uh, world champion at 400 hurdles. and. Once she was uh, over with her track career, she participated to bobsleigh and was a finalist uh, with the Australian team. Definitely. So as we saw, athletics and bobsleigh is the most uh, common combination. Now, the first athlete uh, to qualify in both sports was uh, Belgian sprinter Max uh, Halben who reached the quarterfinals in the 100 meters in 1920 Olympic Games in the summer, and then represented his country in bobsleigh in four editions, 1928, 1932, 36, and 12 years later, his last Olympics in 1948. Halden was not content with just two sports. 
He also played football in the first and second uh, divisions in 1919 to 1936 uh, and competed in the 24 hours endurance uh, event in auto racing in Francorchamps. He was 49 years old and 278 days when he won a silver in the four-man bobsleigh in 1948, which was the oldest uh, medalist until uh, Canada's Ross uh, Howard won uh, gold in the men's curling in 2006. And a year later, in uh, 49, when he was aged 50, during a practice uh, run in the bobsleigh world the championships, his two-man Bob capsized, Bob and Hauben died instantly. A fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, athlete, I think, a truly amazing one. Rest in peace, uh, Max Hauben, and uh, he passed away doing something he really loved. Yes, it illustrates also the, the fear that uh, athletes could have because uh, it's very impressive on TV, but it's even more in trying to do it. And of course, there's the danger aspect that actually doesn't exist in athletics in our sport. So that's the step that prevents people to, to do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -uh. Now, in addition to Lauren Williams, as uh, uh, PJ anticipated, we do have uh, several other top athletes who competed in Winter Games, but with less success. Let's have a look. The very first one was Bela Shepes, uh, who was a silver in the javelin throw in 1928. And uh, in fact, uh, before in 1924, he competed in cross-country skiing and Nordic combined, but uh, he didn't uh, finish. The next one, Eric Einsetter is uh, very interesting. In uh, 1948, so he was competing at the same time, he was silver in the 3000 meter steeplechase. And uh, he also competed in the cross country skiing and Nordic combined. And his best results was ninth in Nordic combined in 1948. He also set two world records in uh, the uh, 3000 steeplechase and was the first to break the nine minute barrier. And he is another uh, great all-rounder who was not uh, content with just uh, two sports, or rather three, because he also had Nordic combined, but also competed in football as a goalkeeper, modern pentathlon, military relays, and gymnastics. Now, Eddie Hubacher of uh, Switzerland uh, competed in the qualifying in the shot put and discus throw in uh, 1968. And uh, four years later, he won gold in the four-man uh, event and bronze in the two-man event. And even though he was uh, uh, mainly a shot putter, he also did uh, decathlon and still holds uh, the world best for shot put in a decathlon, which is 1917. Willie Davenport, uh, 110 hurdles, he competed, uh, he won uh, a gold in uh, 1968, a bronze in 1976, as well as a fourth place in 1972 in his event. And then after his career, he competed in the bobsleigh and was uh, 12th in the four-man event, first African-American at the Winter Games. Now, Edwin Moses also tried the bobsleigh, though he did not make the Olympic team. He competed in a World Cup event in Germany in 1990 and won bronze, but he didn't qualify for the Games. Another top sprinter who did compete at both was Glenroy Gilbert of Canada. He was part of the relay team which uh, dominated uh, in the uh, mid uh, 90s winning uh, gold uh, in atlanta that also has a world uh, championship gold in 95 and 97 and uh, he competed uh, in uh, bobsleigh with his best uh, result being an 11th place in the four man uh, bob in 1994. Now, PJ, you mentioned uh, the athletes earlier and Thorsten Voss uh, of uh, East uh, Germany, who was a silver medalist uh, in the decathlon in Seoul uh, 1998 
and a world champion in 1987, was quite successful 10 years later in uh, bobsleigh, placing eighth in the four-man uh, bob. And he has several world championship uh, medals uh, from uh, 95, 96, and 97. Brazilian uh, sprinter Claudine da Silva, who was a silver in the four by uh, 400 meters in uh, 2006 uh, in the 200 meters, took part in his only race in uh, bobsleigh at the Torino Olympic Games in 2006 and finished 25th in the competition. Russian sprinter Olga Fyodorova Stulneva was uh, a silver medalist in the 4 by uh, 100 relay in uh, Athens 2004. And then she uh, moved uh, to uh, bobsleigh with her best result being ninth in uh, 214 in the two women event. Lolo Jones, we saw. Uh, Lolo Jones uh, is uh, a two times uh, world indoor champion. Her best results in the Olympic Games was seventh uh, in Beijing where she crashed after hitting a barrier when she was leading uh, and she was a favorite to win the event. She was uh, 11th in her uh, um, Olympic uh, debut in uh, Sochi. Hannah Marion of uh, Belgium was a silver medalist uh, in uh, 2008 Olympics, later updated to gold when uh, the Russian uh, team was uh, disqualified. And she was quite successful, placing uh, sixth uh, in uh, 214 in the two women bob. Jana Pittman, as we saw, uh, a double world uh, champion in 203 and 207, was fifth at the Olympic Games in uh, 2004. And she placed 14th uh, again in uh, Sochi 214. Lauren Williams, we have already seen. And then not quite at the same level, but the most uh, recent athlete to double was not in the bobsleigh this time, but it's uh, Czech uh, Eva Hrabkova Noivlova, who was, uh, she was only 28th in the Olympic marathon in Rio, but uh, she is a bronze uh, medalist in the European championship and placed a seventh in uh, 217 in New York uh, Marathon. And her best result was a fifth uh, place in 214 in the 30K mass uh, start. So really good uh, result, maybe not quite at the level as some of them, but uh, this combination, uh, Pierre-Jean, of uh, long distance running and cross country skiing, which had some, uh, some, uh, uh, athletes competing in both events uh, in the in the early years uh, of the Winter Olympics. As you said, uh, probably because uh, uh, top uh, level running is really very, very specialized as is cross country skiing. But surprisingly, it's not a combination which has been uh, uh, favored uh, in the last uh, 20 years. Yes, but probably because um, one century ago, the main factor was just endurance, as in uh, aerobic, uh, uh, the ability to, cons to uh, uh, consume oxygen. Now, the running economy, which, uh, which can be described as uh, the technical efficiency of uh, running, uh, is more and more important. And uh, we have seen that uh, uh, shoes play more and more role in this aspect. So um, the technical side of uh, running is extremely important now, more than before. Uh, and that makes, um, that makes it difficult to be successful on skiing and running. Now, some very successful distance runner have used uh, skiing as a training method. Um, I, I think I'm thinking about Ingrid Christiansen, mm -hmm. who held the world record at 5,000 meters, 10,000 meters in marathon in the mid eighties. Uh, and her, her times are still excellent, uh, would still be uh, excellent and place her in the 
very very top uh, women in in the world and um she used this this training a lot to develop her endurance uh, during uh, the fall. Uh, but um, I'm not sure she would have been uh, very successful in this uh, in this sport. Thank you, Pierre Jean, for all the great insights. And uh, I would like to mention because we we have seen many athletes going to winter sports. But um, uh, I have an example of uh, incredible athlete Irina Privalova, who still has the world records indoors. And she started as a winter uh, sport woman. And she was a, a figure skating. She was identified as a, a precocious talent at the age of three in figure skating, then moved to speed skating uh, as, a, as, a, as a kid. Um, and she even won uh, Moscow championships so in the in the early 80s so you can think that the level was quite uh, high even as a, as kids in in moscow at that time and she went to, to jumping long jumping uh, and finally sprinting and eventually won the the 400 hurdles uh, in sydney 2000 so that that's quite a, a unique uh, a transition from winter sports to to track uh, as a kid, and it's uh, not uh, not very common to see that uh, move. Wow, I didn't uh, remember, or I didn't even know. I think that uh, Privalova had started off as a skater, and you can see it in her style because she was extremely powerful out of the blocks, and she had this, this kind of uh, side side movement with her, her legs, which is a um, uh, oh, characteristic yeah. of uh, speed skating. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh-uh. <laughs> that's, that's great. Thank you. So we're now at the end of our program. It was great having uh, Pierre Jean on our uh, new monthly show, Athletics History Live. Thank you. I and enjoyed uh, this, this uh, discussion and uh, talking about all those great names and forgetting story also. I think it's fantastic. I mean, I had a wonderful time uh, researching uh, all these uh, athletes and uh, just epic uh, achievements uh, on their part. Really amazing. And much more names that would, we would uh, imagine, probably. Yeah, definitely. Mm -mm. Some of them I'd, uh, I'd forgotten, even uh, recent athletes like uh, Glenroy Gilbert. I'd forgotten that yes. he then uh, yes. competed in the bobsleigh. So... Uh, so great well see you uh, next uh, month uh, Pierre Jean with uh, more stories from the rich history of our sport and how they connect to what's currently happening in our sport it's a great pleasure now, thank you in between we'll be recording two L Love Athletics shows so uh, stay tuned see you all soon thank you